as well. And bless, Father, each person that is here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. One of uh, the stories I really like in the Bible that you're all acquainted with is the story of blind Bartimaeus. Remember the story? It's found in Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 46. It says, now they came to Jericho, Mark 10, 46. Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples. And a great multitude, uh, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. So he's on his way on a journey with his disciples and a great multitude. And blind Bartimaeus is there that day. He's been sitting on the side of the road for a long time. That's what he's used to. And Jesus is on his way somewhere else. Uh, we don't know, but it could be that Jesus had chosen to go that way for his sake. We don't know. But he had been in a situation in life where he had to beg. It says in verse 47, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Um, he knew that it was a day of opportunity. Perhaps he realized that he might never have another chance like that day. And so he, it says he began crying out to Jesus. But notice how he cries, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I think that when it comes to healing, at some level, all of us say, have mercy, because we all know that we've made mistakes in our lives. We, always, we haven't always been that careful with our health. And, uh, and sometimes we don't feel worthy, you know, spiritually. Why would God want to do it for us? And here we find that, that he says, have mercy. In his day, they thought that if you were sick, there was something wrong with you spiritually. It was an indicator of God's displeasure. And so he's crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. But in 48, something happened that still happens today. Then many warned him to be quiet. And still today, when you talk about healing prayer, there are many people who say, you know, just go to the doctor. You know, don't waste your time. And uh, when we're crying for God's help, there's always people who are saying, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. But that's really true. Uh, but how did blind Bartimaeus respond? It says he cried out all the more. Instead of being intimidated, uh, he chose to cry out all the more. And so it says, Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying, Be of good cheer. Rise, he is calling to you. The point that I find significant there is that blind Bartimaeus had a condition that others weren't that sympathetic with. They'd always seen him on the side of the road, and they had devalued him. He was beyond hope. And so when Jesus comes by, because no one else is advocating on his behalf, he begins crying out. And as he cries out, the people around him are saying, be quiet, be quiet. It may be that they thought Jesus had something more important to do. Maybe they had their own agenda, and they thought this was going to be wasting precious time that they'd already kind of planned something else for. But he did the right thing, and that is he refused to be quiet. He cried out even louder. And as you come this afternoon, I just want to tell you that no matter what your situation's been, Jesus has a personal interest in you. And by coming here, you are crying out. Did you know that? By coming here this afternoon, you are crying out. It can be for any number of things. Sometimes even in our silence, Jesus hears the cry. And so blind Martus Maus came out, uh, and his problem we know was blindness, wasn't it? But, you know, God can heal in many ways. I mentioned this morning that for Rose, uh, she'd been struggling with something since she was a, a young girl, and uh, a pastor invited pe the people to come in. It was actually in Spanish. She didn't understand most of the words, but she understood enough to know it was uh, an appeal for anointing, and she went for it because she felt she needed actually appealing, uh, anointing for, for emotional healing. And uh, she shared, uh, she shares when she tells the story how it was very quick that God actually healed her of that. And I can tell you, it's nice to be married to someone who's been healed by the Lord. You know, and I have to say that I've been healed too. We've both been healed of shame from the past. 
And it's really a wonderful thing. There's no reason to be ashamed of the past, but sometimes Satan makes us ashamed of the past. Did you know that? And we don't understand why we feel ashamed or what's wrong and why we're afraid that if people know us, they're going to reject us. I don't know. Do you know about that? You know, when I was younger, no one got close to Dan. By the time they got close enough to hurt me, Dan rejected them. That's how Dan stayed safe. Then the Lord just, you know, allowed some things to happen to open my heart up, and he brought a healing. He brought a healing. So God wants to bring healing, but I'm just trying to say that each of you is important, and God has a plan. It's a good plan, and uh, part of it may be for healing this afternoon. I don't know. Anyway, so he cries louder, begging mercy, because that's all he felt he could do. And ultimately speaking, that is the most, you know, complete request. Jesus, have mercy. He didn't say, here's why you need to heal me. Sometimes we give reasons to God, but that doesn't really impress Jesus. He loves us, and he was begging for mercy. So it says, so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And then the group that was trying to dissuade him from coming, saying, be of good cheer. He's told you to come. How quick the crowd changes. How quick the crowd changes. And it says in verse 50, he, throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Now this matter of throwing aside his garment is a significant point. Some of us, you know, find ourselves in difficulties that are of our own making. Um, for example, I don't personally, I'm, I'm not afflicted in this way, but there's some people with diseases that are what they refer to as lifestyle diseases that are the result of what we eat and the lack of our exercise, you know, those kinds of things. And uh, here's something I learned from someone else that I think is very important. God will not heal supernaturally what he can heal naturally. Did you hear me? God will not heal supernaturally what he can heal naturally. If we were to pray that you were to be healed of something that actually God could heal you naturally, it would only embolden you in continuing the bad habits that brought the sickness. And God doesn't want you to continue that. So, so if, you know, if you find yourself in a lifestyle kind of thing and you come and share that with me, I may say I'm going to pray that God will give you the conviction to follow the eight natural remedies. Okay? And that's even a better prayer at that point than to pray, a pray just for healing. Okay? Anyway, so there were things that he... I see in his garment being thrown, you know, to the side, represents those things that sometimes need to be put away. Sometimes healing is blocked because of relational things. Uh, I remember being in uh, New Zealand. I was at a, uh, at a youth seminar, and a woman had shared how God had healed her, well, not healed her, but had brought conversion to her family as a result of her forgiving someone. And as uh, I was being taken home by someone else, they said, Dan, I need to share a story with you. And this individual shared with me how uh, she'd been suffering from back pains, terrible back pains. She'd gone to a pain doctor, a physiotherapist, occupational therapist, a, a massagist, those kinds of things. And, um, and none of those people had been able to, to help this individual. And she said she went to a prayer meeting in a different church than her home church. And while they were meeting, someone said to her, it seems to me like you need to forgive someone. And she thought to herself, it's true, I'm upset with a lot of people, but they don't know me. I won't say anything. Later, another person came with the same message. I think you need to forgive someone. When she came home, she was convicted. And she said, it's true, God. You know, there's a whole lot of people that, uh, that I need to forgive. And she began going through them name by name. You know, here's this person. Here's why I dislike this person. Here's this person, et cetera. And she said, but there's such a long list, I better just forgive all of them. And she said, I felt a hot spot at the top of my back, and it went down my back. And when it left at the bottom of my back, I was healed of my back problems. So the point is, is that we pray, but sometimes the healing comes as a result of decisions that you make or don't make, okay? Now, one of the mysteries that, that affect many people is uh, the fact that people ask for healing, and they're not healed. And I'm not going to give you all the reasons, but when blind Bartimaeus came to Jesus, he, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do? And he was very specific. And we're going to be asking, what would you like us to pray about? Okay? Let us know so that we can pray about what is needed. The blind man said that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And it says, and immediately he received his sight. And then there's one last really important phrase there. And follow Jesus on the road. God heals you 
so that you can serve him better. God heals you so that you can follow him more closely. It's not just done in a vacuum, but, but God wants to, to heal you, to bless you so that he can love you more and use you more. Did you hear me? Now, one of the mysteries about healing prayer is the fact that you know this brother or sister, they've been faithful all their lives. You know, they have been faithful with what they've eaten. They've been faithful, you know, exercising. They've been faithful in every way. They've been strong. You know, they've not been hypocrites in any way. Just these are people that, you know, they're so faithful. And uh, you pray for them, but God doesn't seem to hear the prayer. And, and sometimes people respond and say, well, if God didn't heal them, why should I bother being careful? That's a mistake. That is what I refer to as the Job effect. It was because Job was a perfect man that Satan attacked him. Job said, you know, if, if the only reason Job is following you is because you bless him. And what did God say? Take away the blessings. And what did Job say? God gives, God takes, blessed be the name of the Lord. The devil came back and said, well, if you let me touch his skin, then he'll curse you. And God said, you can touch his skin, but you're not allowed to take his life. And so he lost at that point. You know, and before he'd lost his wife and his kids, now he, he gets boils and all kinds of things. Not his wife. That's right, because his wife talks with him. But anyway, um, God can't help him because if God were to protect him, it would suggest that, that Job would not have been faithful. And so sometimes when we pray and, and people are not healed, it's not because God is not hearing. It's because there's a great controversy being waged in their life. And God has said, I wish I could help you, but Satan has challenged me and I must trust you to stay faithful, okay? So we're wanting God's will. And uh, you, God's will, we can always say, is for you to be faithful. Did you hear me? The other thing that I would say as well is that any time we pray for someone, it is not only a prayer for physical healing, but a prayer for spiritual healing as well. Any time a person becomes sick, it should be a, an opportunity for spiritual inventory. It's a time to look in their lives and see what is going on. And so um, when we pray, we're going to pray for you spiritually as well. But uh, given those understandings, I'm so glad that we can pray for one another. You know, God is able to heal people. It's amazing. You know, I remember praying for people at meetings, and, and you wonder, well, whatever happened? And then later they call and say, you know, you prayed. A few weeks later, God did such and such, and the person was healed. And I've seen God work. I don't pretend to be a faith healer by any means. I just want to be a, a, an obedient son. And trust me, that if someone needs your prayers, don't say, well, I can't pray. I need to go get the pastor. You can pray for that person. Did you know that? God wants to use all of us. And uh, there's no limit to what God can do to bring blessing into your life. So, Pastor, um, I don't know if you want to add anything to what I said in terms of people coming up. I'll let you do that part since you know what you do better than I do. We're going to make available three stations for prayer. We'll invite you as you're prompted to choose whichever station you want to go for prayer. Uh, I know the elders we have contacted to help us with the prayer today. May I ask the elders to stand who are helping us with the prayer today? Okay. Can you come forward, please? We're going to ask uh, Sister Rosemary to take the corner there. You'll be at one station there. And I'm going to ask Joseph if you can join Sister Rosemary there. And you, you, yeah, you'll be here. Okay. I will ask Joan to join you. I am going to be at the back there. So we will have three stations. So, and we will just play some songs. Uh, and then feel free to come forward. They're putting a screen because they need to do something at the back while we are do, going on with our program. All right? If we can just have some, some music playing. Thank you.